Nachmittag, liebes Publikum. Ich möchte Sie zu unserem dritten Gespräch heute begrüßen. Für dieses Gespräch haben wir künstlerische Grenzgänger eingeladen, Künstler, die zwischen den Disziplinen arbeiten. Moderieren wird das Gespräch für Sie die Dramaturgin und Professorin an der UdK, Marion Hirte, an die ich hiermit auch gleich übergeben werde. Ein gutes Gespräch. Ja, vielen Dank, Verena Hartzer. Ich mache das also vielleicht ganz kurz ähm, eine, eine Erklärung sozusagen, wie wir das Ganze jetzt verfahrensweise regeln werden. Sowohl mit Warnoff als auch Alexandre Saint, den sich, die, die ich beide Ihnen genauso wie Monika Gintersdorfer gleich vorstellen werde. Also die beiden sprechen kein Deutsch und bekommen jetzt per Flüsterübersetzung meine deutsche Frage übersetzt. Das setzt mich in die vorteilhafte Lage, mich nicht komplett zum Idioten machen zu müssen, sondern in meiner Muttersprache sprechen zu dürfen. Monika kann das auch tun. Ähm, wenn wir jetzt spontan plötzlich das Gefühl haben, wir müssten dann doch direkt da Englisch sprechen, machen wir das dann vielleicht auch. Und wir gehen davon aus, und das hat ja, haben wir jetzt die letzten Gespräche ja auch gezeigt, dass wiederum die englischsprachigen Antworten unserer beiden Gäste so verstanden werden und wir sie nicht ins Deutsche übersetzen. Der Einfachheit halber. So. Jetzt beginne ich einfach mal von außen nach innen sozusagen die Podiumsgäste sowohl kurz vorzustellen und werde sie dann aber auch bitten, ein bisschen über ihre jeweiligen künstlerischen Arbeiten zu erzählen, die nämlich sehr, sehr unterschiedlich sind. Es gibt zwar die gemeinsame Überschrift des Grenzgängertums und der Verwandtschaft oder der Bezüge zumindest, die hergestellt werden zwischen Bildender Kunst und Theater. Das geschieht aber in den jeweiligen Arbeiten auf sehr, sehr unterschiedliche Art und Weise. Außen sitzt mit Warnock, deren Arbeiten Sie jetzt hier eingeladenerweise schon, oder eine der Arbeiten jedenfalls, konnten Sie hier beim Stücke mal sehen. Mystery Magnet war am Sonntag und am Montag hier im Haus der Festspiele zu sehen. Mit Warnock ist gebürtige Belgierin und hat in Belgien, ebenfalls auch in Genf, soweit ich weiß, richtig, Visual Art studiert. Kommt also von der bildenden Kunst und ich werde Sie auch sicherlich gleich fragen, wie sie dann den Weg zum Theater gefunden hat und ob sie überhaupt sagen würde, dass sie den Weg zum Theater gefunden hat. Neben ihr sitzt Alexandre Saint, dessen Werk die wenigsten, ich nehme fast an, fast niemand von ihnen hier in Deutschland kennen dürfte, weil es nämlich bislang auch noch nicht in Deutschland zu sehen war. Alexandre Saint ist in Frankreich geboren, ähm, hat ähm, sowohl französische als auch indische Wurzeln äh, und ist aber, also hat in England studiert, in Oxford ebenfalls Visual Arts, also ist auch bildender Künstler, der sich hauptsächlich im angelsächsischen Raum aufgehalten hat, dann von äh, England nach, äh, in die USA gegangen ist und dort als ähm, äh, bildender Künstler gelebt hat. Ähm, er hat jetzt eine sehr große, sehr bedeutende äh, Theaterarbeit herausgebracht, die sowohl in New York als auch in Rotterdam zu sehen war, dort produziert wurde und jetzt zum Theaterfestival nach Avignon eingeladen ist, aber eben bislang in Deutschland noch nicht zu sehen war. Es hat ein bisschen die Schwierigkeit, dass wir eben sozusagen über etwas gehen werden, was sie nicht kennen und deshalb werde ich Alexandre Saar auch bitten, diese Arbeit uns möglichst genau zu beschreiben, damit wir eine Vorstellung davon bekommen. Dann sitzt neben mir Monika Gintersdorfer, die wiederum sicherlich viele von ihnen kennen werden bzw. ihre Arbeiten. Zusammen mit Knut Klaassen bildet sie mit vielen anderen Artisten, darüber sprechen wir nämlich auch, ein Kollektiv, das seit, ähm, seit 2007, ist das richtig, ungefähr, seit 2005 sogar schon, also seit neun Jahren, ähm, Aufführungen macht, ähm, die sich ja, eher in einem diskursiven Rahmen, würde ich sagen, entwickeln, aber mit Knut Klaassen hat sie einen ebenfalls bildenden Künstler, ähm, an ihrer Seite und äh, es wird darum gehen, wie weit deren Arbeit eben auch durch die Begegnung mit anderen künstlerischen Diskursen geprägt ist und ähm, welche Einflüsse sozusagen diese Arbeiten äh, ge ja, gebildet haben und auch ihre Arbeitsformen, die nämlich äh, sehr stark kollektiven Charakter tragen, gebildet haben. Ähm, ja, das erstmal sozusagen zur Vorstellung des Podiums. Ich würde jetzt eben, wie gesagt, auf Mietwade zurückkommen. Und ähm, Sie direkt fragen, äh, die Fragen, die ich am Anfang schon formuliert habe, wie kam es, dass Sie als äh, bildende Künstlerin zum Theater gekommen sind und sind Sie eigentlich zum Theater gekommen? Uh, okay. So now I speak. Uh, how come I am in the theater now? Uh, From being a visual artist. Yeah, 
I, I, I think it's a question for both sides, so the, for me and for the theatre. How come the theatre yeah. drags me into the yeah. to the theatre? Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's also still surprising sometimes. Um, but I think it has to do with with the. Um, I studied in the Academy of Fine Arts in in Ghent, and um, I made a lot of. Uh, objects there and uh, every time I had juries I, I um, well, partly I was always too late and so I had to still install my prop and, or my sculpture and then uh, and the, uh, I, for me it's like if I look back to where I come from for me it's like a, a part of the thing that I, I was installing I, I made the installing part of the of the thing by improvising. So uh, that was just a small uh, thing, but uh, I graduated with the Tableau Vivant, uh, which were se seven slowly moving paintings, and the audience was walking around because I, I didn't think about any kind of dramat dramaturgy. Uh, but uh, they kind of picked it out from the theater, uh, programmers, they they saw that uh, because I, I graduated in Voreut in Kent, which is an art center. I asked them if I could use their their concert hall as a location for my project, and and they agreed on that. And I installed a lot of like uh, uh, lightning and everything, so it was really kind of installation, and um, and that that's just how it went. They they they, I that's a very. Funny formal thing to say. From my side, I, that's what they thought it was interesting to see for a theater audience. Uh, and they invited me to make a new performance. And I started really enjoying the fact that there's a lot of people around you if you make something in theater. It's not, a, it's, it's not such a lonely trip, actually. Uh, and I, I don't know if I can say. I just directly noticed, like, okay, I can really abuse all these people. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense of um, there's a production assistant, uh, they ask, uh, what do you need? I'm like, yeah, what, what do I need? I, I just need to make work, no? And then there's people like, yeah, but we can search things for you and we can make sure this can happen. And, and I was totally not aware of this, uh, and 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 uh, in the end, uh, yeah, it was just really nice to make your own rules and to and to say like, okay, I would like to work with the, with a sculptor, or I would like to work uh, with this person, or once with a real actor, and and they paid him, or with a musician, and they paid him, and and, and I could really very much concentrate. So for me, it was like suddenly my atelier on my own. After a period of uh, of um, collecting things on my own, which I still do, and I still very much like that to be alone in my atelier. But it's very nice after one year and a half if you collect things that you can open up your whole very intimate space and 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 actually break it down again with a lot of people and that they start running away with your props and and uh, this I I start really. I like I I like that now that uh, that is like this yeah because the, mm -hmm. people are doing different things with the stuff that you make than you would do yourself. Das klingt jetzt so als ähm, wenn äh, oder Sie sagten jetzt gerade äh, ich kann sagen mach das und ich habe viele Helfer die mir zuarbeiten ich habe ähm, Assistenten äh, das ist schöner als alleine zu arbeiten. Das klingt jetzt aber eigentlich so wie eine relativ traditionelle Form ähm, der, also der Hierarchie im Theater. Es gibt eine äh, Regisseurin in ihrem Fall, äh, die quasi einen Stab von Mitarbeitern, äh, ich nicht sagen befehligt, aber zumindest denen Anweisungen gibt. Äh, wir sprechen ja heute auch unter anderem über Fragen von Autorenschaft. Äh, das können wir dann vielleicht auch, ich hatte erst gedacht, wir würden nacheinander reden, aber vielleicht kann man das wirklich dem Gesamten, also allen dreien in ihrer jeweiligen Arbeitsweise als Frage stellen. 
ist das eigentlich ein ebenso hierarchischer Arbeitsprozess, der dann doch Theater als kollektive Form aber trotzdem hierarchisch versteht oder ist es ein kollektives Produzieren? Also die Mitarbeiter, die Künstler, mit denen Sie da gearbeitet haben oder mit denen Sie nach wie vor arbeiten, wählen Sie mit denen ein gleichberechtigtes Kollektiv oder ähm, sind Sie als Künstlerin und Regisseurin der künstlerische Kopf? I know, of course, it's not only of course on a human level, of course, but uh, uh, it's too much developed already. From the moment I, I let people in, I know what I want to do. Uh, I I think um, uh, for for me working together is very much possible if it's if if you can bring your own thing and if you can uh, share a, a moment of showing to each other of, of sharing, but not. Uh, land in some kind of compromise. Uh, I, I, I know I have, I have a, a, a strong logic in my work that is not the logic of somebody else. I think, I think it's very, very there and, and, and I feel like if I have to discuss with somebody else about this chair, for example, and if we are both equally uh, making the chair, then the chair would be not comfortable. Because I would think short legs and she would think long and okay. blah. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, 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 I it's, it's different than uh, what, I, what I find important and why my work exists. I know my work is only where it is because of other people also. It's not that I want all the, all the, the credits to myself, but... Um, in the end, it's very simple for me. I I start with something and it ends up there because of and with other people. But if I don't do this, then nothing happens. So for me, it's it's not a no. I I for me, it's totally not a collective thing. Okay, dann bleibe ich gleich bei der Frage nach dieser nach diesen Arbeitsweisen uh, und würde Alexander Singh erst später fragen, ein bisschen seine Arbeit uns vorzustellen und zu beschreiben, aber vielleicht gleich nach der Arbeitsweise äh, zu fragen. Auch eher ein bildender Künstler, der vorher als ähm, ein äh, Mann-Performer äh, Performance Lectures in New York gegeben hat, beginnt jetzt ähm, auf Einladung ähm, ähm, von Witte de Witte in Rotterdam ein Projekt zu realisieren, das er schon lange, lange vorhatte, sechs, äh, sagt in mehreren Interviews, äh, acht, neun Jahre lang wäre dieses Projekt in seinem Kopf gewesen und ähm, es ist eine riesige Theaterproduktion von äh, fast 30 Darstellern, die auf der Bühne sind, äh, mit entsprechender Größe der Ausstattung. Ähm, es wird gesungen, getanzt, gesprochen, ähm, ähm, mit großen äh, Bühnenelementen ist das Ganze ausgestattet. Äh, wie haben Sie diese Arbeit sich erarbeitet? Würden Sie da mit Warlock ebenfalls zustimmen und sagen, das ist in meinem Kopf und natürlich gibt es Menschen, die das mit mir zusammen gemacht haben, aber von vorne bis hinten ist alles meine Idee? Um, uh, let me begin by answering a little bit some of the questions that you just asked of Mint, which was, uh, how did you get into the theatre and not just by okay. the doors. Um, uh, like probably everybody in this room, the reason that I'm in this room is an accident of birth, I have to be born somewhere. Um, we're usually the kind of kids who don't want to put away the crayons and at a certain point when everyone else decides let's go to university and study real subjects, we sort of look around and say, oh what should I do, I don't know. Uh, art school, mm, but I, I, it's, it's an open sphere in the sense that uh, art now is not necessarily an academic discipline in the sense that you have to be very proficient at drawing or sculpture or uh, ceramics or whatever. It's uh, very open. I often describe to people who don't know what art is now that it's the kind of uh, sphere where you can make an abstract painting or you could open a restaurant on the moon. Uh, but you still need to open the restaurant. Um, in terms of the project that I've made, uh, this large theatre play, The Humans, you mentioned the um, performative lectures that I've been doing beforehand. Uh, as a, an artist, you have very limited resources. It's a very uh, underground method of uh, producing culture. Uh, I made one-man lectures because one-man lectures are cheap and easy, and if it wasn't great, it was just a lecture. It was a sort of way to do experiments. But I've, uh, uh, I'm very interested in storytelling, uh, narratives. Uh, I say that in this context only because I went 
describe too many stories because we don't have time. But I don't think saying that in itself is very interesting. I think human beings adore stories and adore looking at characters and wondering what does this person think about that person. It's an intrinsic part of the human experience. Uh, and uh, the play that I've made was a first step into creating classical dramaturgical works. Uh, I just happen to have had that one idea bubbling in my head for a long time. I have, um, uh, the first time I made a book, it was very, very big and very, very thick, and I call it First Book Syndrome. The idea is that if I go out now and get hit by a bus, at least I've made this one big book. And so I had also First Play Syndrome. Um, when I was young, I adored the theatre of Aristophanes, I'm probably familiar with Aristophanes, ancient Greek comic kind of playwright. Uh, so there are plays that are satires, that have a, a comic chorus, like the tragic chorus, but they wear fantastical costumes and they sing amusing songs and there's uh, poetry and dance and choreography. And, uh, so I wanted to do a project where I got to include all of those things. But I should really uh, iterate uh, quite clearly that it's a classical play. It uh, has three acts. In fact, there are, uh, the, uh, the play is uh, punctuated by uh, the stagehands bringing on large white letters that say Act 1 and then they take them away in Act 2 and Act 3. And uh, it's very much in that tradition of uh, theatre. My interest in theatre is not experimental, it's not avant-garde per se whatsoever. I came to theatre like my interest in art, mostly by literature. I prefer reading plays to watching them, which is perhaps another thing you should say in a theatre, but that's, that's my um, entry into it. And um, this play itself, I consider, well, it's, it's a story, it has its own parameters, but it's essentially a love letter to theatre. It, it references and pastiches and includes many types of theatrical um, methods from ancient history. So there are references to ancient Greek comedy, as I've already mentioned, uh, Japanese kabuki theatre, uh, the Baroque theatre of Molière, um, Shakespeare, um, those sort of things, right up until maybe the early 20th century, and then it stops. Yes. Last question, um, working with other people in, uh, in such a huge production um, means that to you, um, yeah, working as a collective or as a group or in this classical hierarchical, hierarchical, hierarchical way of directing and having a lot of people working for you. I hesitate to discuss or to comment about how other people direct. I think an actor would probably have um, useful things to say about this because every two or three months they end up working with a completely different director. And so, oh, that Alex is an asshole. He, he, he tells me when to blink, not that I do that. But I will tell you where to stand sometimes. I think the, the relationship between every collaborator, I think an actor is a very good example, is inherently a collaboration. I can make the character with them. I can. They, they hate this, but I can tell them, uh, for the comic effect, you have to put a pause here and then you have to say with this kind of intention. Uh, you're massaging things in that sense, you're micromanaging. But in reality, <coughs> they have to go off and do it themselves. And so, even in a very hierarchical, masculine, patriarchal, classical theatre experience, it is inherently incredibly collaborative uh, compared to most other uh, creative forms. Uh, and uh, my personal experience was like that. That's not to say that it's not uh, a pyramid. Somebody has to be responsible at the end. Dann vielleicht direkt die Frage an Monika Kentersdorfer, die ja sozusagen den anderen Weg herumgenommen hat, aus dem Stadttheater heraus, ähm, das äh, eben halt dann doch, zumindest aus der Zeit, die wir uns noch kennen, äh, durchaus hierarchische Züge trug und auch immer noch trägt. Ähm, klare hierarchische Strukturen hat, aus denen hast du dich herausbegeben und eure Arbeiten entstehen in einem gänzlich anderen Prozess, wenn ich das richtig sehe. Kannst du, würdest, wie würdest du dich verhalten zu den Beschreibungen der beiden vorher? Ja, wir diskutieren selber die Frage der Chefs in der Produktion oder wie wir in der Produktion zueinander stehen, da wir uns jetzt schon fast zehn Jahre kennen, einige des Stammteams. Äh, diskutieren wir auch diese Strukturen und es ist eigentlich auch so ein gewisser äh, Witz zwischen uns, wenn man so will, weil ähm, 
die, die Darsteller aus der Côte d'Ivoire oder auch jetzt die, die aus Ruanda kommen, sagen, dass sie nicht an Anti-Chef-Systeme glauben. Also wir hatten gerade eine Produktion, an der auch Ted Geier von den Goldenen Zitronen teilgenommen hat und der äh, sagt, ihn, ihn, ihn nervt das, dieses ständige Rumgeschäffe, also nicht von mir, sondern ähm, gesellschaftlich gesehen, dass äh, ständig Status ähm, in jeder Situation so abgesteckt wird und äh, dass er mit den Goldenen Zitronen auch versucht hat, gegen solche Mechanismen anzugehen, zum Beispiel, dass auf einem Plattencover nicht immer äh, der Liedsänger erscheint. Und dann sagen sie den Fotografen, ähm, wenn der dann solche Arrangements schon pusht, dass der nach vorne treten soll und sagen, nein, das machen wir, das machen wir nicht. Und dann von den 200 Fotos, die da sind, wird am Ende in der Zeitung dann doch das gedruckt, wo zufällig der Liedsinger vorne war. Also dass diese Prozesse, wie eine Gruppe wahrgenommen wird, das ist einerseits wie die Gruppe sich selber strukturiert, aber hat natürlich auch was damit zu tun, wie man abgebildet wird. Auch ich bin heute hier auf dem Podium und nicht der Rest meiner Gruppe, also dass man nur auch zu... Einladepraxis oder wie kuratiert wird, wie wird berichtet und ähm, das ist nicht so leicht, diesen Zuschreibungen zu entgehen, aber ich würde jetzt auch nicht, weil man das vielleicht als Konzept interessant finden würde oder fortschrittlicher, dass es kollektiv ist, sagen, ähm, dass es bei uns keine Hierarchien gibt oder es gibt zumindest sehr stark definierte Zuständigkeiten und äh, mein Partner ist, äh, ist, ist Knut Klaas, ne, der Willner Künstler ist, und er hat eine ziemliche Autonomie über das, was er äh, denkt, wie die Bühne auszusehen hat. Und das, äh, das ist vielleicht ein bisschen wie bei mir, dass äh, er auch denkt, äh, wenn man das jetzt ewig rumdiskutiert oder jeder sagt was dazu, dann wird das nicht unbedingt besser. Das sind also Setzungen, denen vertraue ich, aber ich kriege das manchmal erst ähm, zwei Tage vor der Premiere zu sehen. Also äh, das heißt, ich, ich, ich probe und ich weiß nicht, wie meine Bühne aussieht, aber ich habe einen sehr starkes Vertrauen zu Knut, dass der was machen wird, was, womit wir dann umgehen können, aber im Sinne von, der wünscht sich gar keinen dienenden Umgang mit dem Bühnenwelt. Also es muss jetzt nicht so, das Stück, das soll nicht Dekor sein, das soll das Stück nicht nochmal erklären oder assoziativ damit verbinden, sondern es sind Setzungen, die, die konkret nochmal Körper und Objekt auf der Bühne verbinden. So kann man sagen, die einzelnen Teilnehmer, man, man entscheidet halt unterschiedliche Dinge. Also ich entscheide meistens darüber, wie die Reihenfolge der Szenen ist. Aber die Texte, die man dann auf der Bühne hört, die entstehen durch Gespräche. Und ähm, wo äh, das, das ganze Team sehr, sehr viel miteinander spricht, also man könnte auch sagen, wir müssen das gar nicht so viel pushen, das ist eher, dass man lernen muss, wie man äh, fünf Leuten, die gleichzeitig sprechen, äh, zuhören kann. Und oder sie dazu bringt, dem anderen auch noch mal zuzuhören. Also das heißt, da ist eher eine Fülle, ähm, die auch nicht so zielgerichtet entsteht, dass die, die Sprechenden schon denken, ah, ist das dann nachher eine gute Szene, sondern dass wirklich das, worüber sie sprechen, sie mitreißt. Und meine Aufgabe ist es dann, ähm, dafür zu sorgen, dass das dann doch noch ein Stück werden kann. Weil, weil dieser, dieser Strom es nicht so gefiltert, dass, dass äh, die, die würden auch einfach weitersprechen und weitersprechen und weitersprechen, wenn wir nach Hause gegangen und hätten uns vielleicht sehr gestritten auch, oder, aber es würde nicht unbedingt ähm, zeigbar sein als Szene. Und das ist irgendwie meine Verantwortung, dass am Ende äh, doch ein Theaterstück dabei rauskommt. Ähm, zu dem, ich sage es mal ganz kurz, also die, 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 da, der Text wird niemals schriftlich fixiert, ähm, obwohl die Struktur bekannt ist. Und das heißt, dass der Performer im Moment auf der Bühne immer frei spricht und deswegen auch Veränderungen in seinem Text vornehmen kann. Also wenn sieht sie, jemand kommt runter oder schläft gerade so ein, dann äh, kann er versuchen, äh, auch auf diese Person so einzuwirken, dass sie sich verändert. Oder? Also man kann äh, den Ablauf des Stückes, kann jeder Performer auch beeinflussen und äh, das versuchen sie auch. Ähm, ja. Das finde ich jetzt erstmal eine interessante Erfahrung, also das, es geht ja um die Frage, wie weit oder wodurch oder wie Kunst Theater bildet und jetzt von den beiden bildenden Künstlern zu erfahren, dass sie sehr starke, klare Vorstellungen davon haben, wie diese, diese Abende entstehen und eben gesagt, der Diskurs im Theater vielleicht einen ganz anderen Wegen folgt und andere Arbeitsweisen versucht aufzugreifen, finde ich erstmal sehr, einen sehr spannenden Befund. Meine Frage wäre auch an die bildenden Künstler, gibt es denn etwas, wo, wo sie sagen würden, ähm, aus meiner Erfahrung äh, funktioniert das Denken der bildenden Kunst in general ähm, 
anders als das Theater? Also welche Erfahrungen haben Sie gemacht, wenn Sie auf Schauspieler treffen oder auch auf Theaterinstitutionen, wo Sie selber als Bildner, Künstler, Bildner, Künstlerin sagen würden, äh, nein, meine Vorstellung von Kunst äh, folgt völlig anderen Strukturen und natürlich auch anderen Inhalten. Kann man das sagen? Uh, from my limited experience, I would say that there aren't any fundamental differences between the way people... No. Um, nor are there really in many other, any other mediums. Uh, not creatively, not necessarily. Uh, there are certain professional differences uh, related to the fact that the different professional fields. And I would say... I'm hesitant to say this, so don't bang my head off. I do get the feeling that theatre is more ideological Ironically, I didn't expect this, than art, um, but uh, not, not enormously so, but yes. Um, um, again, from limited experience, when I wanted to make my play, I, spoke, uh, I uh, was introduced to a couple of people who run theatres, I said, I'd like to make a play, and they said, ah, oh, yes, very interesting, you know, theatre is very difficult. Awfully difficult, you know, it takes a long time and the audience can't be bored. It's not like art. Uh, and I said, Oh, no, no, I understand. No, no, actually, I love theatre and I love telling stories and I'm very interested in text. I love Tom Stockard and I love Shakespeare and, you know, reading, reading Pence. And they said, mm, We don't like that. That's classical. And I was like, But, but uh, there was a bit of a contradiction because the expectation was that as a visual artist, I would do something crazy and experimental and collaborative and something wild that they wouldn't have. But then I said, no, I want to do, I want to get to the heart of what you guys do, that's why I'm here. I said, oh no, no, that's no longer interesting to us, which I thought was odd, but these are just limited experiences and theatre, like art, is a very big world. So I'm not saying it's all like that. I just want to say that was my few experiences. Um, for me it's more like, um, I also, of course, I'm not generalizing, but I think uh, what I don't understand sometimes in the theater world is uh, that there can be such a big difference between making the scenography, making the costume, directing, and then the music. I, it's a little bit, I'm speaking a bit against myself, what I said before, which I actually didn't mean so like it's I am not collaborating of course you are in the sense that you discuss every single part of what you want to do with the person you can exactly do what you want and even make it better and the sense is a, is a definitely working together but um, when I was a cinematographer a few times I saw a director sitting in the tribune and then I had to walk in with my plan, and then the costumiere had to do uh, the fitting for the costumes, and then the guy just stayed in the tribune and said no and yes and yeah and cool. And then uh, I, I, this is maybe extreme example, but uh, I don't understand so well if you want to make something that, that you don't have an idea about this, you know, that you don't have a very clear idea about what you want to, how it has to look like, or I, or what this person has to wear. Because for me, it's like a, it's like maybe this is very esoteric, but it's like one body. If you want to make a piece, there has to be this and that, and that. I mean, otherwise it doesn't function. So, and then you also, how can you, if you don't have a taste, like how 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 can you? I, for me, it's not that I that I that I don't want to. I, I just for me, it's like quite unimaginable, like to have no idea. Oh, I would like to react to that yeah. because, for example, um, we give our actors the choice that uh, Knut might have some stuff for them, and the rest they can wear what they like to. Um, their their private can combine their private stuff. We think they are really very. Um, 
quite stylish guys who um, know what they like to wear and it's hard uh, to top them. And, but we, he wants to throw in some pieces um, that they uh, could also use, but they don't have to. And they also, after they show, they can take the stuff. They, it doesn't remain in the theater, like uh, the theater has to take care of it, but it belongs to them. And they can use it in a different context because they're also doing show business, so they might use it in their next video clip. So it's like, um, uh, it's not that Knut doesn't have it have a taste, he has a quite uh, special taste, but he doesn't want to control everything. So he doesn't want to control exactly which shoes, which which top, which which which, because just this combination could be the right one. But he thinks that these persons might combine it in a way he, 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 he couldn't um, have done it. But sometimes this is also leads to a disappointment. For example, they took away a lot of good clothes that, that were brought to, to the play, but they, they left it in their home country maybe when the next shows are, the next tours. And then they just come in ugly joggings and then we're disappointed because we had so nice stuff. But you have to live with that. If you give a certain, if you don't want to do, be a decision maker to, uh, and controller to 100%, sometimes you can get a really good surprise which is much more on the top what you thought of, what you have planned and sometimes you can be disappointed and this happens on all the levels. For example, we also give them control of light. So in the show, yeah, we put the thing on the stage and maybe there are some possibilities programmed. Actually, we do quite minimalist light um, because also we don't want different scene, different light. That's like a no-go. And um, so uh, the performers, um, can change the light and I will not know in which moment and they even can put another performer in the dark for five minutes and the other one has to live with that. But uh, it's like that we want that people can see which kind of decisions are taken and by whom and not hide them away and nobody knows who, who took the decision. So it's like, but this was also, to be truthful, this was a decision of Knut to hand it over to them because he thinks it's an interesting principle and they had fun with it. If nobody wanted to do it, maybe we would say, mm, let's don't use these kind of principles. But it's like, um, it's not like um, no, somebody who doesn't know what he wants. So when you say, if, if, because there's a difference between how much control do I want to have about the text, about the light, about the clothing, what, do yeah, I want to have 30% It's so much depending on what you want to do. I mean, it has to do with with uh, with uh, the timbre of your work. Uh, well, of, for me, it's exactly. very important it's about, to control. Let's say the to if the topic is decision making, so it's the kind of which kind of decision making. No problem to argue against each other because that's good. Okay. So because that's or that's what what I just mentioned. We're sitting here. Drei sehr, sehr unterschiedliche Künstlerinnen und Künstler auf dem Podium mit sehr unterschiedlichen Zugängen. Ähm, während ähm, die Arbeiten von äh, Monika Gintersdorfer und Ruth Klaassen und ihren ähm, Mitwirkenden extrem diskursiv sind, die ganze Zeit eigentlich geredet wird, es wird auch getanzt, es wird auch gesungen, aber äh, zu großen Teilen basiert das Theater auf dem gesprochenen Wort. Ähm, ist das, was ich zumindest die eine wunderbare Arbeit, die ich sehen durfte von Medwalop, ist komplett ohne Text. Das heißt, man hat sozusagen schon mal zwei komplett gegenteilige Zugänge dazwischen. Alexandre Sainz Arbeit, er hat die Selbstmesse beschrieben, sehr literarisch ähm, ausgebildet an historischen, klassischen, literarischen Vorgaben, äh, basiert sehr stark auf einer, auf einer rhetorischen, würde ich sagen, Spielweise die sich sehr stark ausgebildet hat an ähm, klassischen äh, Shakespearean Acting äh, in, in Großbritannien. Also so, man hat da wirklich drei wahnsinnig verschiedene Zugänge, aber vielleicht wäre die Frage, um jetzt mal auf Inhalte zu kommen, das, was Alexander Song vorhin schon ansprach, die Narration, ist das vielleicht etwas, was dann, ob mit oder ohne Text, ähm, etwas, was alle drei so sehr unterschiedlichen Künstler vielleicht verbindet? Was ist sozusagen der Impuls, dann auch gerade die Frage an die beiden bildenden Künstler, nochmal ähm, auf die Bühne zu gehen und nicht einfach nur ein Objekt zu schaffen, was man in eine Galerie stellt, äh, sondern 
in, 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 in narrative Formen äh, sich auszuprobieren. Ist das, eine ist das etwas Gemeinschaftliches? Ist das etwas, was Sie antreibt? Und wenn ja, was sind sozusagen dann inhaltlich Ihre Impulse, äh, über die Sie oder mit denen Sie Theater machen wollen? Vielleicht auch alle drei gefragt. So, is, is narration your, your common thing uh, and, um, uh, uh, and what, uh, well, what else could be the impulse for you to leave the gallery, to leave uh, only one, not leaving only one uh, object in the gallery, but going into the theater? Is it storytelling or, or with what's The, what the benefit of uh, going to theater for you? Uh, uh, it's always a pleasure to sit in an audience and watch them laugh. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's horrible when they don't laugh as well, or mm -hmm. cry, or whatever you're trying to do. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, we talk about theater and art as a medium. So, in painting, a medium is the thing that carries the pigment. So, you're asking, what is the content? The content is the pigment, right? Um, so, um, my answer is, quite dull in a sense. The, the kind of painting, the kind of pigment I want to carry are stories about what it means to be a human being, to fall in love, to grow old, to die, to worry about money, about family, to love literature, to want to escape from life, to want to be in life, to, you know, these sort of things, the kind of things that make you cry and uh, make you laugh and, uh, you know, old-fashioned stories, boy meets girl, boy meets boy, whatever it might be, uh, they make the universe, whatever that, you know, that might be. In that sense, the exact content is not too specific. Does that make sense? For example, I'd be quite happy to, uh, I could assess a story in, in a forest in Canada or in, uh, in the, uh, the Balkan War in the 90s. But my interest wouldn't necessarily be in the forest and it wouldn't be the Balkan War per se. It's a background to tell a more universal kind of story, which in a way is a rather conservative and dull thing to say because I'm saying that I'm interested in telling um, an arc narrative something that has existed for a long time. It's your approach, so. For me, it's not really that. Uh, I, I find it difficult to make something, to put it on a pedestal and uh, say, uh, then with a glass of champagne, uh, this thing there, I made it. Like, uh, yeah, for me, For me, this visual thing is sometimes too um, too static, and uh, and in theater, uh, I, I like more like to 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 keep it to more uh, like the theater for me is very dynamic medium. You can really do whatever you want on stage. So of course, this I like very much. It's like really a playground. You can do whatever you want there. As long and then why I would leave the gallery and go in the theater is like the, is the because I can blow up my own sculpture and in a, in a situation and then within this is another question and a new situation exists and you can make a kind of Uh, metamorphosis from one object to a situation that is completely something else in the end. I, and I, that's for me why I went into that. Yeah, but so, so your main interest in is the object or the, or the material or is there any kind of idea, nucleus idea of, of a story or a situation as you said? So is this the, the first impulse for you um, to work on a piece, or, or what's your first impulse? Yeah, the mat material the still. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, it's thinking about a lot of things at the same time. I'm, I cannot let go that I'm a part of this art world now. So uh, there's a layer in my work that uh, directly talks about that. Where am I in the landscape of art and what is... Uh, let's make uh, this, uh, this, this thing that we all know from this other artist and I mean the, there is art of reference to art in my piece there's also reference to me being in the arts there's also reference to me being not in the art being alone somewhere 
is reference to me and and or me uh, or somebody else or whatever like uh, interaction between uh, the society or how we function together or what is a depression what is a laughter what is a, an asshole what is an art asshole what is graffiti what is a city what is a what is a painting what can be an installation what is a fat guy what does it mean is it real is it not real and would it be better if we all have a fat suit so if we feel like this we can also wear it like a uh, it, it, uh, for me, it's not the. Uh, it's not one thing. It's maybe too much. That's you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's why I like to to have a place and one hour to have all this inside. Maybe the installation. Inkarnation is that etwas was euch antreibt, or würdest du es anders beschreiben? Ich ich würde ihr eigentlich zustimmen, dass es immer verschiedene Dinge zugleich sind. Vielleicht Leute, die Theater machen, sind wahrscheinlich nicht so genau wie Leute in der bildenden Kunst ihre Verortung in der Theaterszene, also in welcher Tradition sie sich stellen, gegen wen sie sich wenden, für wen sie sich wenden. Das denken die zwar mit, also das denkt ja auch das Publikum mit, das denken auch die Kritiker mit und man selber kennt ja auch andere Aufführungen, andere Künstler, an die man sich orientiert, aber ich glaube, dass die Leute in der bildenden Kunst darin etwas präziser sind, ähm, genau zu wissen, wie sie sich innerhalb der ganzen Szene verorten. Aber zum Beispiel, wir denken das schon mit, also im Sinne von, ähm, wenn wir so oder so mit Bühne umgehen, ähm, von was grenzt sich das ab und mit was solidarisiert sich das? Oder wir wissen auch, dass wir bestimmte Mittel schon seit so und so langer Zeit irgendwie durchziehen und dabei bleiben und wann wir sie wechseln. Also dieses Bewusstsein, dass man sich doch in einer... Ähm, man ist nicht alleine, man ist auch nicht der, der das alles erfunden hat oder als gäbe es die anderen nicht, sondern man befindet sich in einer konkreten Szene zu einem bestimmten Zeitpunkt, wo man ähm, für Sachen einstehen möchte, auch längerfristig, und von sich anderen Sachen sich abgrenzt. Das ist eins, aber der, vielleicht der stärkste Motor ist, ähm, dass die Leute, mit denen ich sehr häufig arbeite, dass ich eigentlich häufig davon ausgehe, was, ähm, wo wir da so gerade angekommen sind miteinander. Also das heißt, äh, welche Themen waren stark, ähm, worüber haben wir uns gestritten, dass man weiß, da ist was, was wichtig ist und das sollte weitergehen. Und äh, da wir uns ja nicht auf schriftliche Texte beziehen, und, ähm, kommt das auch uns. Wir, wir haben aber immer wieder Gäste, von denen wir wissen, dass da ein Input ist, der uns in dem Moment sehr interessiert. Und damit die anderen auch immer wieder rauszufordern, also wir bleiben nie in Ruhe, also es ist nie, dass man sagen kann, dabei bleibt es, sondern im Gegenteil, es ist eine sehr, sehr unruhige Gruppe mit sehr, sehr kurzen Probenzeiten, was auch dazu führt, dass man das eigentlich nie in Ruhe machen kann. Also das, wie soll man sagen, man ist so ein bisschen... Konkret unruhige Gruppe, was heißt also, wie, wie viel, also wie, wie, wie castet ihr, kann man das überhaupt sagen? Nein, wir Eure casten gar nicht. Nein. Also es kommen Leute, die mit euch arbeiten wollen, Sch äh, Spieler, oder äh, geht ihr auf Leute zu? Nee. Stellt ihr das vor? Ja, das ist, wie gesagt, einige kenne ich halt schon seit zehn Jahren, andere acht Jahre, andere fünf Jahre, wo man sagen das kann, das ist Kernteam. Und die haben aber auch, da die ja auch noch in anderen Zusammenhängen arbeiten, also Frank hat auch schon bis Kollegen oder SKL oder und die, die lernt man auch kennen oder man geht zusammen ins Tonstudio, dann lernt man den Arrangeur kennen. Und äh, das heißt, dass, äh, da kommen dann immer mal wieder Leute dazu, aber auch äh, manchmal aus ganz konkreten Gründen. Ähm, jetzt wollte ein ivorischer Tänzer wollte nach Deutschland ziehen, habe ich gesagt, naja, aber als Tänzer hier, wenn wir jetzt nicht gerade arbeiten, wie sieht es aus? Zeigt ihr das hier Tanz, kennst du, interessiert sich das? Und dann gesagt, nein, äh, überhaupt nicht. Und, ähm, wir haben gesagt, na gut, dann lernen wir mal ein paar Leute kennen. Und so haben wir zusammen aber halt mit Jochen Roller und Richard Ziegel begonnen. Unter anderem, äh, und das war so interessant, dass wir die fortgesetzt haben. Aber das war, sie gesagt haben, da ist ein Bereich, den kennen wir nicht. Wer wäre da jemand, wo man, ja, oder bei manchen Leuten, zu Ted gibt es politische Verbindungslinien zu Peter Ott. Ich weiß nicht, ob Sie ihn kennen, Dokumentarfilmmacher, auch aus Hamburg. Da, da weiß man, das ist zugleich ein politischer und religiöser Denker. Und das trifft sich mit bestimmten Teamkollegen. Und das ist so, obwohl die aus ganz anderen Zusammenhängen kommen, weiß man, da ist was, worüber die sich auseinandersetzen können. Und danach suchen wir die Gäste. Manchmal gehen wir ja auch ein Stadttheater und dann äh, sollen wir mit jemandem aus dem Ensemble zusammenarbeiten. 
und äh, das klappt mal gut und das klappt mal nicht. Weil ähm, bei denen häufig genau diese Verbindungslinie, dass der Punkt ist, warum sollen wir denn zusammen was machen, besteht nicht unbedingt. Manchmal eine, irgendwie vielleicht eine Art von Faszination oder so, aber, ähm, aber manchmal klappt es auch super. Vielleicht ein nächstes Thema, das, ein Stichwort, äh, ihr denkt das Publikum manchmal mit oder man weiß es äh, sozusagen, in welchen Kontexten äh, ihr aufführt oder für wen ihr produziert. Auch das eine Frage an alle drei, auch als Erfahrung. Ähm, gerade wenn man eben wie aus der bildenden Kunst kommt, äh, äh, da sind ja eigentlich, und ich gehe davon aus, dass es in anderen Ländern nicht wesentlich anders ist als in Deutschland, dass die Sphären, vor allem was die Rezeption angeht, doch sehr getrennt ist. Ein Publikum, was sich eher für bildende Kunst interessiert, geht sicherlich auch ins Theater und umgekehrt gehen Theatergänger auch in Museen, aber sozusagen dieses fachspezifische Publikum, was mit einem sehr großen, mit einer sehr großen Kenntnis der jeweiligen Kunstform ähm, äh, bestimmten Erwartungen diese Kunstwerke rezipiert, sind doch sehr unterschiedlich. Ist das etwas, was bei eurer Produktion irgendeine Rolle gespielt hat, wenn ihr, als ihr ins Theater gegangen seid? Also ähm, hat sich eure Kunst verändert bei der Vorstellung, ich zeige das einem Theaterpublikum? Ist das irgendeine Überlegung, die ihr als Produktion, also als Produzenten anstellt dabei? Und äh, wenn ja, ne? wie hat es sich verändert oder ähm, merkt ihr überhaupt, also wie weit spürt ihr überhaupt die Rezeption eures Publikums? Wie weit geht das auf eure Arbeit? Wirft das ein auf eure Arbeit? Ja, I think, I think there's definitely a difference in that sense that uh, if, if, uh, if, I, if I start making a, a, a performance, and I want to bring it in, into gallery or situation, then things have to mutate somehow, you know. It's not possible for me to put, uh, for example, a mystery magnet like this up in the gallery. It's the, on the other hand, why not? But uh, uh, it is, I, how I uh, feel it is, uh, it is a difference. Uh, if people bump into your work, or if they uh, come with an expectation, with a ticket, with their friends, with the, uh, the, with, the with the idea of having drinks after, mm -hmm. and and it's like a whole evening, you know, like uh, it's a very different approach, and I I, I think it's I sometimes wonder. Uh, how it would be if things are just in the space and if they also kind of develop but over a longer time. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I thought about it, of course, because all the things in Mystery Magnet are all different, uh, different images that I actually put in a kind of structure all after each other. But um, it is possible to do that. It's just uh, I still. Uh, have a problem actually. I, it's a very personal thing, but uh, if I graduated in the academy, I was totally surprised with my performance that these people liked it because I thought, yeah, they will not like it because this is theater and uh, and uh, and I still have like a huge respect for visual artists and I don't consider myself really as a puissant uh, a visual artist because I, I always need to to have an interruption or somebody or or uh, every every idea is, a, is already this production on its own in my head, you know? So it's a, uh, or fantasy or something. So, but, uh, I think my work 
is is a, I, or not my work, but the influence of this visual thing is also that I cannot make a complete act, you know, because I know that I or I I, I trained of, or I do believe myself that it's not necessary to play like if it's real. So for me, it's not necessary to make a kind of make believe or to act. Like really, I act this uh, like it's real, you know. I, I, for me, I can enjoy it looking at it, uh, like in films and everything. If I really, I, I can much more enjoy it actually in films than on stage because on stage you, it's obviously not. You are not sad, obviously. <laughs> you know, you can play it, but you are not actually. But in a film, I can, I can really truly believe it. In theater, I, 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 I have a bit. Problem with this to, to believe that and maybe the actors you've been watching aren't very good. <laughs> what? That seems surprising to say that film acting is inherently more believable than stage acting. Yeah, I think it has to do with watching it alone in the first place. And do you find the experience of watching film already very unrealistic and disarming? For example, I'm watching a thief, but it's George Clooney. But it's also a thief, but it's really George Clooney. And then the, you know, you're manipulated by the music. Yeah, but the theatre right, yeah. is also like that. But exactly, true. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, but it's just a certain kind of film and a certain kind of yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, this uh, talk, uh, Ali Howard can uh, maybe become more uh, something to talk about, you know? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to insult the talk, but... Uh, uh, well, I would say that, uh, to get back to your question, yeah. um, the, uh, who makes up the audience? That's kind of what you were asking. Mm -hmm. In general, it's people who look like this. They've got funny glasses and cool clothes and, you know, there comes things like this. In theatre, at the matinee, there are more people with grey hair. And they laugh at different places and they fall asleep more. And people fall asleep a lot in the theatre because it's hot and it's dark. And I'd say that. Um, but the audience is always there and it's always present and that's really important. Uh, you have that also in film. If you make a film and you sit in the cinema with people and you know they're engaged or they're not engaged. This is something that's relatively different to making an object and putting it in a public space. People peruse the space, they go into and out of things when they want and when they don't want. But the entertainment and the edification, the pleasure of the audience is really important. So we spend you know, a certain amount of time you've been asking us why do we do this? What are we interested in? And you're looking behind the curtain, behind the little wizard that pulls the levers. But for me, the, the wizard that pulls the levers, it's only interesting for other wizards. And they're like, oh, look at your lever, and how do you do it? And are you very dictatorial when you pull the lever? And I'm like, no, I, I let the lever pull itself. Uh, but the reality is these things are not important. What's important is Dorothy standing in front of the curtain. It's the audience. And the audience, you might as well have, when you asked us, why do we do it? My wife might as well ask you, you know, why do you go to the theatre sometimes? When you could watch a story at home or you could go and experience visual arts. And what is it that's special to, for that experience to you? Yeah, maybe it could be that uh, it's a life experience. So because we are sharing, we are sharing the same room and for you as a actor, and I guess you are acting in your performance as well, do you? Yeah. Um, so you, you, uh, immediately um, feel my reaction because we are sharing the, the same room and you have to react on it. As an, as an artist, as a fine artist who puts his or her objects in a gallery, leave it out, uh, you are not concerned with me as the audience. So I think I have a great impact in your, in your work and obviously or probably you, you like it. That, um, yeah, you for me, a, I, I make really my work for the audience. I, oh, this is this. I, I, I really uh, after uh, after uh, a period of working in my atelier, I really start thinking. Okay, so now I'm going to show it to the audience. Like, how will I do it? What is uh, like you said? Like, uh, what can be the what can be the the thing that we throw to each other back and forward? And and uh, do I want to make a statement or do I want to ask questions? Can I show propositions or will I make uh, like uh, statues of truth, you know, like uh, for me it's all in this question and I, I, for me it's just a little bit unclear where the difference then is because mm -hmm. I... Um, yeah, I, I think we, we all like to work with the audience and 
there are many things about how uh, what does it mean? So, for example, do you put light on the audience that you can see them very clear so they're in dialogue with you? But also if you change, I think there's also something very... Uh, I'm coming from theatre, but we were also invited to perform in galleries. And there, for example, it's... Uh, if you're a guest, it might feel fine because um, when you're not from the same discipline, because there, for example, people would take uh, where they they would stand around and take their place very easily. They're used to I can be wherever and I can come and go. Whereas in theater, they they look maybe at the the, the, the chairs have numbers or they would never disturb and come and go. And I was quite relaxed by the fact that they would come and go, and you don't have to make a narrative like. It has to begin at the beginning and then stop at the ending and there has to be the perfect dramaturgy but you can do something for one hour and if somebody watches 10 minutes it's fine or 50 minutes it's fine. So for me sometimes to break the theatre expansion can be fun and so I think if somebody is of uh, another discipline it can be fun to have this kind of audience and as I have an intercultural group when we perform in, in African countries the audience is not like behaving like uh, German audiences, so they will talk, they will throw in things, they will be on the phone, uh, they will always react immediately. When it's boring, they go out or um, in Kupi de Galus, they, they throw things on the actors, whatever. So um, you, you notice immediately in a very hot climate. So it's fun, but you have to perform with a different energy. And here we appreciate that people afterwards, they always do talks. And, and still think about it another two, three hours and discusses this patience, we also like it. So they're very uh, different kinds of audiences, but to shift from one audience to the other and to understand who's in front of you, which language does he speak, which thing, reference does he know, which reference does he not know, um, it's, it's, it's nice to experience this and not to be naive about it. And sometimes you have the feeling you're falling into a uh, piège, um, and, and because you're like, uh, 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 for example, while we were in the Tanzsparte, uh, we uh, went in to Stadttheater Bremen and they put us into the Tanzsparte, whereas we talk a lot and we, we, we're not really a dance group. And then just because they label you, there can be also misunderstandings disappointments until you shift it that it's not exactly the Sparta and that's maybe something um, which uh, in, in, in art is not such a problem because as you said you can do a painting or you can just have a concept or can have material, you can just have human beings but in German state theatre there's still kind of Sparta yeah? and um, in, in the free scene this, this thing is not so important but sometimes you have to run against this um, Spaten thing and, and the Spaten thing creates disappointments whereas the show as such could communicate uh, directly. So it's fun to be in a different, yes, as, uh, to be in theatre as a, a Bildner Künstler or it can be fun as theatre to go to a gallery because people are behaving differently and it can be fun also. But I think it's always a little bit fun if you have a little bit less responsibility uh, in the kind of that you don't know this field and this field picked you so it was not me saying go to a gallery when if you want to have this in a gallery okay but to be this gives this like a uh, uh, leichtigkeit uh. because in visual arts you cannot decide yourself that you're going to be part of it in theater you can apply and you can you can really start working with people and you can uh, you can make projects until you die and then in the end you will be part of it. But as a visual artist I don't have the feeling it's 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 more it's more they pick you out. So yeah, but yeah, uh, you, it's just anyway you need a theater that wants to show you also but I know it's much more like in building kunst like uh, to be you can be more active in theater to go for it than yeah. and not to wait to be picked out, yeah. It's much more social uh, and subsidized uh, uh, thing. You don't think so? You think theater is as private as visual art? <laughs> no, what do I know? I mean, uh, a couple of minutes ago, I 
they were describing how the Bush Theatre gets 2,000 scripts and they put on six plays. That's, you know, to get picked. Sounds quite similar. That's the way the world works. I don't think, but, I don't you, think the differences between these things are very yeah, I think the interesting in and of themselves. I don't think they're morally that great. I think the, the institution is quite another interesting question. Question. So, what are your experiences concretely with um, the institution of theatre uh, compared to galleries or the Kunstmarkt? Don't know art market. Um, is is uh, are the gallerists um, so close to you as an artist uh, that they develop your work, talk talk about your work? Try to yeah develop and uh, um, uh, further uh, yeah sponsor, but not only in a in a commercial way but uh, uh, in a, in a developing way. Um, uh, uh, is this more closer or is it only a kind of a, only a economical interest in you as an artist or is it, so you said theatre is much more social uh, world. Is this your experience? Yeah, that's how I. That's how I. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how I feel it. Yeah. That is much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the talk we have now, for example. Can I, I cannot believe this uh, talk would be in a visual context like this. Why? Because. I, or, but yeah, of course I can imagine, and there is also talks. It's not that they don't talk to each other, but it's just. It, I, for me, in Belgium, and also next to that, and if I if I go to these events like uh, Venice Biennale and uh, Documenta and everything, it's I have the feeling it's it, it's much more uh, I mean, not pretentious, but it's it's much more closed. It's not so open to people. I, and the, the market I, is really a market. I mean, there is gallerists, if you don't have, if your work is not to sell, then it's very simple, then you don't come in to the gallery, you know? Or you can maybe do like on the opening, like something nice, but, uh, but it's, uh, I, as long as it sells, it's something, I think. So in many in, in a big part of the visual arts. It's not my experience, <laughs> but it's my. super cool for you. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not so interesting, so I won't say very long. But a counter example would be uh, if you want to direct a big play and you need a big star, you want to have Maggie Smith at the National Theatre, you need a good agent, you need to know people, you need to be connected. Just as the art world is. Uh, many different things, from very small spaces to very big galleries and everything in between. And of course there are people who are motivated by money and power and wealth, and there are people who are motivated by love of art, and they exist in all these echelons. And who you choose to work with, and that's your choice and your decision. And theatre may here in Berlin feel like a very socially inclusive and radical and uh, emancipatory field, but it can also be uh, Broadway and the West End and people from the West End trying to get, you know, on a Hollywood film and the actors that I'm working with, I'm trying to keep them from going, I can't recast them because they're being put into West End shows because they get TV jobs, jobs that pay, film jobs, you know, this is part of the complex world in which they're playing and they have friends who 10 years ago were sitting like we are, you know, talking about like, man, the system, fucking... <laughs> And, and those same guys are now, you know, uh, in um, Game of Thrones and things like that. And they, you know, they're thinking, oh, I get paid $200,000 to make an episode of Game of Thrones, but I'd like to do my dad's work. This is the way the world is. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's neither bad, it's neither good. The important thing is that we all try to navigate it uh, the way we can. Um, yeah. So, yeah, theatre, cutthroat, commercial. <laughs> If I hear you both, I think uh, Knudwood, uh, who's my partner, who, who completely agree with you.
And I think it's maybe um, about being picked and... Um, yeah, I agree really also, too, of course, yeah, but in the I, sense that, that there's many layers on this. It, yes, but I think it's also uh, the difference of place where we are, because in Germany or Austria or Belgium, um, there is a kind of uh, theatre sponsoring that you can apply for something, and for sure you have to be picked, but there are oh, quite a few foundations, and already with uh, not so much money you can start doing, doing something. It depends on the level, but let's say to start doing something is uh, quite um, possible. And uh, maybe it's also sometimes uh, uh, because you, in this discussion sometimes it's like, yeah, what we are talking about, yeah, what you say is right, what you say is right. It's also about which, um, which of which place are we talking? And you have quite different experience because it's also in, in a different scene. And so uh, how, um, I think it's very much linked to it, and I'm like, if we would be, we would be quite special, I think, if we would uh, every time say um, we're talking about this and this and this scene, and then it might be true what you say. If not, we end up always like saying, yeah, it can be so, and it can be so, and actually it's all universal, we are all humans, and I'm, actually I'm fighting against that. Um, also in theatre, like to say there are universal qualities which we all share and that's why we can communicate with everybody. I think there are really differences and they have names, places, dates and reasons and some developments, which things were pushed or which things were not pushed and who has access to it and who has not access to it in which society. So I'm, I don't think... Um, I know maybe in this discussion it's a little bit hard if every time we have to specify which scene exactly we're talking about, but if not, we're ending up like, um, yeah, it can be so, it can be so, actually it's universal, isn't it nice that we are human beings in front of other human beings? And I think there are differences and that you think what you think your experiences are because you were in a in, in certain, uh, you know certain galleries and you, you were in, in a certain places to a certain time. Or I have people, I know, uh, like some of my friends are really like this art, art, artist who really have a very good life from this visual art and then I'm next to it uh, working my ass off like hell, much more, uh, I, like m not much more work, that's what I'm saying, but in a very completely different way and then it's, it's uh, a complete struggle, you know, <laughs> and if you put, it's just sometimes very absurd if you, uh, and of course it has to be who is this man and what is he making his money with in the visual arts, of course, but I, if, you, if you place it very, very um, uh, ra um, extreme next to each other, it's like a little bit funny, you know? One makes painting of this big, 600,000 euros. Of his dick, for example. Or, <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, this big. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, but for example, in theatre, okay, you can be successful and you can, can earn money to a certain limit. But after this limit, there is this limit, it doesn't go much so much further, and if not you have to become a film star or something. Theatre, there is a, whereas in art, so many people, they, they will never get rich with it, but some of them do. And those who do can get really rich with it, and this makes like the others, uh, also think it might still happen. So let's say the the level from it's. I think it's easier first to start theatre to get some money because they give money into productions. Whereas in galleries, to get uh, the the time that you're working mm -hmm. before you sell something, to get this paid mm -hmm. and to get your stuff paid mm -hmm. is really hard. That's quite a big difference. So here you can get three four weeks with some stuff around you paid for production. Mm -hmm. You just uh, have to convince a little jury. Um, against 100 other projects and not uh, 2,000 other projects. And you can already work for three, four weeks with a small staff. After this, you will not be rich, that's sure. Uh, um, you just did a production. But uh, artists, I think there is a, a lot of people nev never getting rich and a lot of people not getting this production money. But some of them really becoming shooting stars, so there's still this 
kind of, um, and, and you can, it plays a role on, on the bursa and the financial markets, which theatre does not do if it's not maybe the scene that I do not know, which is Broadway and all that stuff, because we're like, um, let's say in Germany, it's not, we have this Spartendenken, it's musical, and I'm not so much, uh, cons I do not think about it so much, let's say, about the commercial theatre is not as big as in, um, It doesn't play an important role here. And with a commercial theatre, you will stay, you will not make so much money. And I think even Cats isn't, um, I don't know. Probably I can open it to the question in the audience. Which, yeah. I don't know if it's a real question, but I was thinking that somehow I find it strange to still divide the art forms so clearly. But, and in the, or I thought the division is obviously mostly in the, in the um, tradition of funding and, and the traditions of audiences and not so much in the topics and the contents because like Alexandre said that every art form is very self-reflective so they all took a peek into the other, like to the, the fine arts, to the performing arts and the other way around and somehow it's now about the question about the education system uh, because you also said that you you didn't know exactly what you want to become, but you were the one who didn't stop painting and who didn't know what else to do. So you ended up at an art school, but you didn't know exactly, I want to make sculptures and I'm good at this. And for example, in, uh, I studied applied science of theater in Gießen, and for me it was exactly the same. And I, I, knew, I didn't know I was supposed to be a director or a stage designer or a performer or whatever. There was no decision making at any point, but it was just ending up there because everything else seemed strange. So, because the, I, I don't know, this definition of the different forms, for who is it so useful? Because the, like, I don't know, there was this Julianne Rebentisch, she wrote this book a few years ago, but I think already it's, it exists in English, the Aesthetics of Installation, it was called. And there is no such thing as an installation, but there's only ways of pointing out performative structures or pointing out theatrical structures or working with symbols or situations and so on. So yeah, I'm just wondering for who is the use to keep the, the disciplines? No, I think it's not keeping the, the disciplines, but um, if you talk about um, words, it's sometimes useful to define it. Um, and uh, to get an idea of it, and um, it could be a result to say, okay, there are a lot of difference or similarities, or um, uh, it has to do with each other, or uh, the result could be uh, to learn that um, in, in several points, fine artists think differently, or some of them are thinking similar to um, what means performing arts. So. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Answers to that question or other others? Ich habe ja sowieso das Gefühl, wir haben in Deutschland sagt man, das Theater leer gespielt und wie hier die, die, die Zuschauer und Zuhörer verlassen zunehmend den Saal, ob aus inhaltlichen oder anderen zeitlichen Gründen. Erschöpfung. Ich hoffe es für unser Gespräch, weil ich will es jetzt nicht sozusagen noch länger erzwingen. Ich danke erstmal allen Beteiligten auf dem Podium für wie gesagt, den Bericht aus ihrer jeweiligen Perspektive und ihrer Erfahrung. Und ja, danke fürs Kommen und fürs Zuhören und für das Gespräch.